Hello. I was recently in a coffee shop, and a woman's necklace caught my eye. So naturally, I scanned down to her shoes. And when I walked up to the counter, I looked over at her and I said, "I love your outfit from head to toe." And she looked at me in surprise and said, "Why don't we tell that to one another more? We're all looking." Yes, we are all looking. In 2009, I was working with women, and I was working with corporations, and the trend was affinity groups. We had groups for race, religion, and of course, women. But women at the time were doing something interesting with those groups. We were dividing ourselves even further, to married versus single, to stay-at-home versus working moms, and. I wondered if we tend to go in the direction that we put our energy, where were women heading when we were dividing ourselves among ourselves? Now, I happen to know that this was around 2009 because if you remember NPR's "This I Believe," it was coming to an end. I had been asking myself for years, "What do I believe?" and this was my last chance. And in this culture of women dividing themselves among themselves. What I wrote surprised me. I believe in tribes of women. I was raised mostly by my mother. I was born to her alone, but she was not alone in raising me. My grandmother, my aunt, and many adopted aunts over the years were with her every step of the way. As a child, the harmonious chime of women's voices, often interrupted by laughter, was ever present. We were together sometimes, sometimes alone. But it was known that an ear, a shoulder, or a hand was always within reach. That's how it had been, and how it would be. And their strength, how it resonated; their patience, how it endured; their wisdom, how it surrounded them like a halo when they shared it, which was often much, and without expectation or requirement of action, it was a gift. And it was the seed planted with the unwavering faith that it would someday bloom. Some of my tribe I see every day, some not for months, some years, and some have died. But time and miles never diminish their presence and influence. They are my forward movement when I can't face the day, and they're my respite when I've run too far, too fast. My tribe has shown me how to unabashedly be myself, to be a woman. And as women, our likenesses greatly outweigh our differences. Now, with a daughter of my own, I watch as she develops her bonds and her friendships around some of the same importance placed on trust, comfort, connection. She will cultivate them through shared experiences, common times in life, and some for no reason other than they are necessary to her being. I believe in tribes of women. I believe in their strength. Their beauty, their necessity, and the difference they make in the lives of women—that is how it has been, and I believe how it will be. <clears throat> When I was done, I looked up, and the world was different. I was different. I was seeing it through the lens of tribe. Tribe is when we search for our likenesses. It's where we. Search for our common traits. Tribes support one another. But this was just my story. This was just my perspective. Or was it? I began sharing my story, and women began sharing their stories with me. And we would smile and laugh and cry. And we had a knowing head shake. Yes, that is how it should be. And then the sad. But it's not how it is. So I put on my lens of tribe, and I went out into the world to find out why. The very first point of, that we need to do is we need to accept one another. And I learned very quickly that to love others, I must first love myself. And so I went out to find out how to do that, and I ended up here. Now, I consider my myself a feminist, and you don't have to be a woman to be a feminist. If you support women's 
gender equity and women's rights, then you are a feminist. And recently I came across a Kavita Ramdas presentation, Radical Women Embracing Tradition. And it so encapsulated what I discovered myself on the journey to self-acceptance. We have for so long been believing that we have to be men to make it in a man's world. That there's something wrong with being a woman. And this has been internalized. In reality, there's everything right with being a woman. We are intuitive and collaborative and strategic. But we have been told that who we are isn't enough, or it's not what's needed. Now, men and women have male and female traits, but we've been moving away from the ones that are so us, where we need to be ourselves to be a woman. And we're trying to move toward being more aggressive and more decisive, when exactly who we are is exactly who we need to be empathetic, selfless, passionate. And when we embrace all of these aspects of ourselves and accept ourselves, then we start to accept one another. And I see you. I see you, my best self. I see you, my sister. And then this can happen. We can connect. Who here has ever walked into a room full of women? Mm-hmm. What happens? There is a wave of energy that happens, and it's powerful, but it's not always positive. That woman that I saw in the coffee shop, my look could have been more like this. If you have walked into a room full of women, you know these looks, the sideways glance, the closing of the circle, the complete ignore. But when we go into a room with the lens of tribe, we want to connect our sisters with our sisters. I see you, and we reach out. And it looks something like this. I love those shoes. I really do, we should talk later. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, we start talking about business. We go from there to politics, to books, to kids, and back to business. Because we're looking for our points of connection. We're looking for our ways to understand one another. I hear you. So this ritual of connection that we do, I wondered how far does it reach? How far is it my neighborhood? Is it my friends? So I went to Pakistan, and in Pakistan, they are very, very proud of their founding mothers, who you see here. They revere their prime minister, Benazir Bhutto, fallen premier, premier Benazir Bhutto. And, but women still face challenges every day. And so we went for the Pakistan Startup Cup. We went to do that in support. But we wondered how many women entrepreneurs would show up. There were few, but they were mighty. This is Manawara. I met her in Islamabad. And we connected over her beautiful dupadas. And I reached out. I see you. And we talked, and we did our connection ritual, and I found out that she was not married. She did not have children. We had no common categories that we fell into together. But she was there, and she was passionate about her business. And if I do nothing else as a woman in her tribe than to support her and to cheer her on, then that's enough. In Karachi, I met Shanila. She's standing next to me in the turquoise. And I recently reconnected with her, and we talked about that day. And I talked about walking in to an enormous room and being a stranger and how easy it would have been for us to put ourselves in categories, a million of them, and separate. But instead, the women gathered, and the wave ensued, and we reached out. I see you. And we told stories. I hear you. We connected. And then Shanila told me that she had not known anyone there either. 
that she was a stranger too. But now, Rizwana, on the end, is one of her best friends. And none of us are strangers anymore. So, if this ritual of connection is happening all over the world, and there are women everywhere accepting one another, then why aren't we supporting one another more? You're listening to these stories, and you're saying, yes, this is how it should be. But soon you'll shake your head and say, but we don't have enough of these stories to make lasting change. That we train people how to treat us is a universal truth, but it is especially true for women, especially when we are on the road to gender equity. In the world, worldwide, we have almost attained 50 women leaders around the world running their countries. In the U.S., we have had none. I went uh, to a meeting with a man the other day. I think he's very, very enlightened. I love his ideas and his perspective. And I, asked, I told him about the concept of tribe. And he said, I don't know about that. Women are mean to each other. That's how we're viewed. And we're not doing a whole lot to dispel it. We take away our own power. We take away our own opportunities when we hurt women on the way to or that have reached the top. When we talk more about hair and clothes than about their intellect and their good work, we are training people how to treat us. We have an opportunity to lead, and we have to take it. Think about the disproportionate number of women in politics and as leaders in business. Yet, even without the title of president or CEO, we have been running countries and companies for years. Think about first ladies. Why do we scrutinize them so much? It's because we know their possibility of influence. And in companies, that saying, women get it done, it's for a reason. We have immense powers of influence, and it's a two-way street. I have two sons. I am the first, and so far only, woman in their life. The opportunity that I have to train them how to treat me so that they will go out and treat all women that way, that opportunity is immense. Men also have this opportunity with your daughters, to raise them in an environment of self-respect and support. But you don't have to be a parent in order to influence every single day. Let's go back to Shanila. And yes, that is her about to go parasailing. It says a lot about her. She also goes to the gym. And when I asked her if she goes during women's hours, which is common in Pakistan, she smiled and said, no. Those don't work for my schedule. I said, OK. She said that she is often the only woman in the gym. But this would not be possible if it hadn't been for the encouragement and support of her instructor. He assured her that he would make her and the men around her comfortable. And now, other women are inquiring about the off hours. Men and women have the power of influence every single day. What would the world be like if women were to support women? And what difference would it make? We have to do one more thing as leaders. We have to add one more element. I feel you. When women empathize, it compels us to action. I want to meet, introduce you to Anam. She has a company called Pakimomo, I just like to say it. <laughs> and it's a virtual assistance company. And she connected with a woman in Finland who encouraged her and partnered with her. And now she has five women employees. They all work together in an environment of support and trust. And we, and, and she has a partner in Finland, a woman across the world 
reached out and said, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. And together, they are creating opportunities where they did not exist. And now I'd like to introduce you to Benish. When I walked up to Benish's table and I asked her, what is the proposition, value proposition of your company? She looked at me with confidence and said, to end terrorism. And it's not hard to say that her company, her husband, herself, went on to win that competition. Benish told me that it's the women of the country that are the most affected by terrorism. They're losing their husbands, their children, their country. And it's the, those who are most affected by change, most affected that are going to affect change. Manish has seen the women of her country. She hears them, and she feels them, and she is leading change. So in this world where there are no categories, where we cheer each other on to the top, where we walk into every room with our lens of tribe. I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Where we train people how to treat us by giving one another the same rights and respect that we expect. This world where men are examples of self-respect, support, of their daughters, of their co-workers, of all the women in their lives. In this world where women and support women, women step out in front from behind because we helped one another get there. So, if you also feel that tribes of women make a difference in a woman's life, and please put on your tribe lens and join me. Now, I know that it's not easy to make a collective mind shift, to start a movement. But the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And as fabulous as these shoes are, it's not about the shoes. It's about the women in them. And if we accept, connect, and lead, I see you, I hear you, I feel you, then we can attain gender equity. I believe in tribes of women. I believe in their strength, their beauty, their necessity. I believe the difference that they make in the lives of women. That is how it has been, and I believe how it must be. Thank you.